that. We had good times in the past night. But I don't think we could have some good time tonight. Look at the title here. The damage and loss of the ground of oneness. Do you all still remember the charge Moses made to Israel in Deuteronomy 12? In that chapter, at the opening word, Moses charged the children of Israel to destroy all the places. That means all the high mountains, the hills, and the green trees. And also to destroy all their dedicated pillars, wooden symbols, and other images. And also to destroy all the names of uh, the idols. Now, by reading all the verses, mostly in the kings, you could see what Moses charged them to destroy, all were restored. Right? All came back. The high priests came back. The uh, green trees came back. The dedicated pillars, wooden symbols, and all the names of the idols came back. We have to see that to destroy all these places and to destroy all those abominations was to what? To keep the place of God's choice. God had a place of his choice and God wanted, commanded, all his people to go to that unique place. So they had to destroy all the other places. In a good sense, they did it. Then, in Kings, we can see the temple was built. The temple was built among them in the city of Jerusalem. And that was the place of God's choice. We all have to see that in God's heart's desire, there should be all the time one unique place of God's preference. And this eventually should become a kind of control a kind of a protection, protecting God's people from being divided. So here you can see God's wisdom that all the places had to be destroyed so that God's people could go to that unique place. In a good sense, I say again, they did it, so eventually, the temple was built. Listen, such a warning word is here. The one who built that unique temple and the unique place, the ground of oneness, according to God's choice, we know this one, right? Solomon. Solomon, the one who built that temple, he, after not too long, not too long time after that, he built other things. He built what? He built high places. And all the high places are just the high mountains, hills, and so forth, which most charged them to destroy. The children of Israel, in a good sense, destroyed those places. But after the building up of the temple, the builder 
of the temple. Solomon began to build up those destroyed places again. Here I would call your attention to one thing. As we read through all these verses, we could see the high places or the building up of the high places had so much to do with fornication, with evils, with idolatry. The worship of idols, the evils, fornication, the indulgence of lust, all the things are just wrap up with this one thing. What one thing? The setting up of the high places. And today, we have to understand the real significance of the high places is devotion. To set up high places means what? Means to set up devotions. God's intention was to keep his people in oneness, to worship him, right? But the high places were set up to replace that one unique place. And this means what? This means divisions were set up to replace oneness. The unique place signifies oneness. And the high places signify divisions. So to set up high places plus equals divisions. According to typology, we could see all evils, all the abominations in the eyes of God, fornication, indulgence of lust, all this evil things were ripe up with this one thing. What one thing? The setting up of uh, high places. In New Testament language, I tell you, all the evil things are connected to the uh, divisions. Have you noticed? Among the children of Israel, after the building up of the temple, two kings took the lead to set up the high places. Solomon, you may consider him as a good king. He was the first one. Then Jeroboam, a bad king. He was the second one. A king of Judah and a king of Israel. These two kings, they took the lead to build up the high places. Have you noticed? With both of them, the uh, building up of the high places was out of their either lust or ambition. Solomon built, built it the high places because of his indulgence of lust. He indulged himself with all those concubines, the foreign wives, right? Just to satisfy the foreign wives there. And that is the indulgence of Solomon. He built up the high places. The high places are out of Solomon's indulgence of the lust over all those evil, sinful foreign wives. That is worse than fornication. Then there, on the high places, what were there? Idols. Idols. And then all kind of evils followed. Jeroboam, he built the high places because he was ambitious. He lacked to keep his empire. Am I right? He lacked to keep his country, his nation, 
he, out of his ambition, builded all those high places. Then also the worship of idols to calves remain, and even all those ugly priests of all sorts of people were uh, established. And even he ordained a kind of a feast in the mint, uh, in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day. Well, by all this you can see the high praises in New Testament term, divisions are of what? Of the indulgence of lust and of ambition and of evil and of idol worship. Apparently, today, in Christianity, when we look at all the divisions, I don't think we have that much realization that wrapped with the divisions are indulgence of lust. Ambition. Evil things. And idolatry. We don't have that much realization. Am I right? The most we just would say they are not so good. They are divisive. And they are wrong. And they are not scriptural. And we would not go along. And we cannot go along. This might be the most we can say. But I tell you, in the eyes of God, Every division is uh, wrapped up with what? With lust, or ambition, or evil, or fornication, or adultery. Do you really understand what is the significance of the high place? Or high places? Every high place is an elevation above the level, exalting something. I tell you, regardless what's what, every division today in Christianity is an elevation above the level, exalting something. Could you see? Every division today is a high place. An elevation above the level, exalting something other than God. No need to say the evil things. I tell you, just the good things. Say Bible study. Bible teaching. Well, apparently nothing's wrong here. To teach people to study uh, the Bible is a good thing. It's a good thing. But you have to realize once the Bible study or the Bible teaching becomes a division. And many did. Right? Once such a good thing, teaching the Bible, the Bible study becomes a division. Keeping a group of Christians to be a division. I tell you, that is a high place. That is something elevated above the level. Exalting something other than Christ. One day, I was uh, invited by Brother Azir. I had dinner, we talked about, and he told me how he taught the church history, especially the history of the Reformation. Uh, he told me, my, in the 16th century and so forth, some godly people, pious people, they, <laughs> Elevated something. 
For instance, the Sodom, the, the Baptists, 300 years ago, the Baptists, they elevated baptism. They elevated immersion. You see? Well, to baptize people by immersion is altogether right. It's altogether scriptural. But to elevate this thing above the level and exalting it other than Christ, I tell you, this is a high place. Could you follow me? And eventually, with this kind of elevated things, lost don't you agree with me? Ambition took the chance. I tell you the unique place of God's choice kills all kind of lust and gives no chance, no opportunity to any kind of ambition. Anything, even the best thing, like the Bible study, if it is elevated above the level and exalted beyond Christ, I tell you, that, that, that gives place to the lust and that offers good opportunities to the ambition. You know, when lust come in, evil follow. When ambition get in, no doubt, the following thing is idolatry. Actually, ambition is a kind of idolatry. Well, don't think this is my interpretation, this is my opinion, concept, and so forth. Please read all such verses as this on the board. You could see my why right at the time when the children of Israel were ready to cross the river Jordan to enter the good land, that old father Moses was very much concerned for. He charged him again and again and again, just like an old loving father to his children. You must, you must destroy all the places when you enter in the good land. You must destroy all the high mountains, high hills, the green trees. You must go to that one place where your God sets up his name there. Why he charged them so much? Now you understand. Because this has too much to do with their destiny before God. If they would do this, they would do everything right in the eyes of God. If they would not do this, they would do everything evil in the eyes of God. And the history after the entering into the Goland has proved this adequately. <clears throat> the men like Samuel, like David, you see, of course, they followed Moses' charge. They destroyed the high places, they destroyed the names of idols. And eventually, they gained the victory over the whole land. So the whole land was free, was cleared up. Then the temple was built. When the temple was built, we all know the story, the glory of God came down. That was the golden time of the history of the children of Israel. But not too long after that, the build of the temple, began to build high places. That's because of his lust. 
than a competitor. The king of Israel, Jer- Jeroboam, he also followed to build all the high places because of his ambition. One was of his lust, and the other was of his ambition. Both brought in evils, evils, idolatries, and these provoke God to his wrath. Brothers, do you believe this is only a kind of historical fact? This is just a story in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we are told all the scriptures were written for us. Such a history must be very meaningful to us. A number of good things in the New Testament have not been fully divided. I do believe the Lord's intention was to leave to us to check with the types figures in the Old Testament concerning the damage of the ground of oneness and concerning the loss of this ground. The New Testament doesn't say much. It doesn't have much development. I thought about this a lot. I could only find probably these three portions. One in First Corinthians, one in Romans 16, and one in Titus. Some of you tonight may help me to get the first one, but I couldn't get it. And all these portions are very short. First Corinthians chapter 1 has only about four verses concerning this one thing. And Romans 16 has only two verses. And Titus just one verse. Very short. Not much development. So we have to go back to the Old Testament. Just like concerning Christ as our Passover lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. The New Testament even Concerning this matter, doesn't have much development. Just by the New Testament, you cannot understand in full what does it mean that the Lord Jesus is the Lamb of God. For this, you have to go back. right? Go back to Genesis, go back to Exodus, to go back to many pages of the Old Testament. Concerning Christ being the Lamb over Passover lamb, we need the Old Testament to see all the development. In the same principle, I tell you, concerning the damage of the drunk of oneness, we don't have much mentioned in New Testament. For this, we have to come back to the Old Testament. My we need to use Deuteronomy 12, then we need to use the Kings, Chronicles, and so forth. By this, you can see, all oh, the Bible gives us a clear and full development. Now we can understand, dear ones, do you know how and why divisions come in? Now you know. Divisions come in because of our lust. Divisions come in because of our ambition. Lust and ambition. What Solomon was, or did, was a good example, good example of this. Solomon built all those high priests to create divisions because of, of what? Because of his lust. And Jeroboam built all those high places to cause division. Because of what? Because of his ambition. Right? Only the unique place of God's choice can kill the lust. Can restrict the lust. And can kill 
of the ambition. Now, I would uh, repeat again and stress strongly that we all have to see my why in the Old Testament. The unique place is so much charged because it gives no chance to any kind of lust. It gives no opportunity to any kind of ambition. Just this one thing, the unique place of God's choice, I tell you, kills Everybody's lust and destroys everybody's ambition. But eventually, people would not be willing to be killed in this. Solomon, especially today, of course, for years, years, I couldn't understand the man Solomon. He built up the temple. Was that good? You read Qing, 13 chapter 8. At the temple, Solomon offered such marvel prayer. Only after two chapters. After chapter 9 and chapter 10. In chapter 11 of the same book, he became just a devil. Could you believe? I couldn't believe. And he was the one who wrote the Song of Songs. But so deep in life, I couldn't understand. I just couldn't understand. And this afternoon, while I was in the Word, I got more puzzled. I said, what, Solomon? Are you a devil? Uh-huh. Then I got the answer, yes, all of us are dead. <laughs> I tell you, if we don't keep the ruling, the restriction of God's choice, we all can be able. Then I began to understand why some of the saints in the past, not only in this country, also in China, I saw over the 50 years, more than 10 times, this kind of evil things happen. Before they caused the division, they were very good. They were Solomon building the temple, writing the Song of Salt. But because of their indulgence of the lust, they build it high places. I don't mean in the change. I mean in our history. In the 50 years history. In China, I saw more than five, six, seven times when Brother Nee was there. People there to set up the divisions, high places, to cause division. Because of what? Because of their lust. There was no bridle upon the lust. Rather, they just indulge themselves in their lust. So, divisions came up. So, high places were set up. How about here in the USA? I better chat with Brother John Ingalls. He knows this thing very well from the first year. You know, John, in 1963, all the different groups, they proposed strongly to have joint meetings with us. And I warned them with a message from Romans 14. And John was there. A good number of had when Samuel Chung, all these brothers were there. They all heard my warning. I warned them, saying, for us Christians to come together so surely is a good thing, but we have to realize why we were divided. Just because of different opinions. So we have to learn the lesson from Romans 14. I warned them twice within one minute. 
But they said, anyhow, they like to come together. Then we were together with them. I tell you, in a short time, one, two, three divisions. High priests, I'm right, were elevated. What was that, John? What was that with Reseda? What was that with Whittier? These high places. One is a high place with tongue speaking elevated. And the other is a high place with the teaching elevated. One exalted tongue speaking. Regardless of whether the genuine can force them and so forth, aside, da da da, that's fine. And one exalt the teaching. Am I right? They didn't care a bit for the unique place of God's choice. That means they didn't care a bit for the oneness. They only care for their desire. Desire is a better word. Actually, what's that? Lust. Just the lust. And eventually, something even within this past 17 years happened. I can count once, twice, three, four, five, six times. Am I right? Yeah, you just count. Some because of lust, some because of ambition. Some left the Lord recovery after coming in for a period of time. They left because of what? Because they couldn't be one of the leaders. They couldn't get the eldership. They couldn't get the ambition fulfilled. So they left, and they turned their back against the Lord recovery. At the beginning, they appraised the Lord recovery, right? They appraised, they exalted in the sense of the Lord recovery. But just because they couldn't get the eldership, they what? They opposed the Lord recovery. Because of what? The ambition. So they went out to set up a little hill. A little hill. They set up some little elevation. Little thing. Not much. You just you just tell what they have to set up. Just little. Little elevation. Exalting. I tell you, nothing. Exalt you nothing. But they still like to exalt. What is that? That is a high place. Causing division. Oh, dear saints, we all have to learn the warning and to learn how to fear God. This is why all these points are there in Deuteronomy 12. I have pointed out all of them to you already. Don't do things right in your own eyes. But do things good and right in the sight of the Lord. You have to learn to fear God. Am I right? I tell you, brothers, nothing demands us to fear God. So much as the keeping of oneness. Suppose some of the saints would go to Las Vegas to set up a casino. We all would come down. We all would come down. Am I right? But suppose some would go just to the next street to set up a meeting place. We do condemn. As you would condemn the casino in Las Vegas. I don't think so. 
We all condemn the casino much more than a meeting place. The most you would say, well, I don't agree with that. But that is not too bad. You see? They are not, they are not doing things to help people gambling. They are doing things to help people knowing the Lord, knowing the Bible. Well, apparently it is so. But actually, what is behind? What is within? What is within? Lust. What is behind? Ambition. What it is actually an elevation, exalting certain things above the level. I mentioned to you, probably not to you, young ones, especially to those who have been with us since Elden. 1933, the first time I went to Chen, to Shanghai, there was a brother, very active. Actually, I love him very much. I tell you, he was very active. He was seeking after the Lord. Then, after a short while, even uh, we asked him uh, to speak in the preaching meeting. Then, of course, by that time, Brother Lee was not there. After Brother Lee got to know this, Brother Lee one day, not definitely, purposely, to say something to me as a can dealing. But just when we were together talking some of the things constantly shared there, Brother Nee told me, oh, better not uh, ask that brother to uh, uh, speak uh, because uh, he just wants to be an elder. He came into the church life that year, 1927. After seven years, then in 34, I was not sure about him. We gave him a chance to speak in the gospel meeting. But I was warned by Brother Nee, better not to do that. Well, the story is this. Eventually, up to 1948. Listen, from 1927 to 1948, 21 years passed. He couldn't get into the eldership. He tried, tried every way. Even to, he couldn't get in. In the summer of 1948, he formed a meeting in his home and heard a traveling preacher and turned his back against the church. And that traveling preacher wrote a long book criticizing, defaming, spreading rumors concerning Brother Lee. You just tell me what it is. This is not only hill, probably mountain. High place. Elevated. Elevated. Every division, if you like to spend some time to investigate, you can find out every division into this Christianity is an elevation. Exalting something about its level. To teach the Bible is good, but that shouldn't be an elevation. Separating the children of God. So many of you do appreciate pre reading, right? Be careful. Be careful. Some of you were there in Indianapolis. When I was there in 1968, I still remember the month. It was in April. 
Some of you were there. You talked to me. I said, as the people don't feel happy about pre reading, please don't do it in the meeting. Please don't do it in the meeting. Pre reading, pre reading is good, but we shouldn't elevate it. Make it elevated above the level. Exalt the pre reading. If we do this, I tell you, even pre-reading becomes a division. Not so easy. Am I right? <laughs> Not so easy to say this. I tell you, even to say this is not so easy. Could we? Or could we? Say, Lord, by your mercy, we just don't elevate anything. We have no elevation whatsoever. Don't think I'm boasting. Well, I am testifying. My, when those four grows in 1963, desired to come together. I told you already, I warned them. Just after two Sundays, <sighs> one group leader came to me. Just like this. Brother Lee, Brother Lee, you must do something. <laughs> I said, what happened? He said, tambourine. Ding ding dang, ding ding dang, tambourine. Well, I said, brother, honestly, being, I don't like that either. Honestly, being, but I'm not bothered. Let me share with you. In the eyes of God, what is the difference between tambourine and a piano? I knew she liked piano 100%. <laughs> so I was trying to catch him, to bind him. I said, please tell me, what is the difference between these two things, contemporary piano before God? He said, of course, no difference. Then I said, why you like piano? You like tempering? He said, I just like piano. I don't like tempering. I said, this is all together your cultural background. But he said, anyhow, I don't like it. You see, this is a kind of attitude of what? Of elevation. As long as you and I hold on to this kind of attitude, we have something elevated. And that is a high place. I would say strongly that was due to the lust. Am I right? That was due to lust. Then I went to the other part who played tambourine and spoke in tongues. I said, brother, do you realize three-fourths of the congregation, they don't appreciate tongue speaking so much. If you like to have the church alive with all the saints, you have to take care of their feeling. If you insist, insist to speak in tongues whatsoever as you like, then you will cause everybody to go away. They all will drop out. Then there will be only you yourself. Then why you need to come together with so many to meet? I tell you, eventually, no one heard my, my, my voice. No one. They all like to elevate their opinion. I'm speaking something mostly to young people. I don't think we older ones 
we the ones who are over 60, 65, 70, 75, could have too much time to cause elevations. <laughs> Am I right? Of course, Jin and Zhang still young, under 50. <laughs> but especially you young ones, who are 20, 25, 30, you have a lot of time ahead of you. But you must learn one thing. You must learn one thing, not to have anything elevated. No, no, no. Nothing should be elevated. Only Lord Jesus, he, he should be exalted. We have no high mountains. We have no high places. We only have one level. Which one exalted? That is Christ. The damage of the ground of oneness was that Solomon built at the high places. Jeroboam built at the high places. Don't think this is a small thing. Otherwise, the kings, the old husband record, would not be so repeatedly mentioning this one thing. Oh, listen. No need to say the bad kings. Even so many good kings. Like Asai. He was very good. But even he was not able to remove all the high places. Not so easy. Not so easy to read off. To get rid of the division. Why? There... Maybe some excuses. Asai and the people of his time may have some excuse, saying, well, the high priests, some are good, some are not good. Some are for the worship of dedicated pillars, right? Wooden symbols, but we have some high priests, not for that. We have some high priests for the offering of the sacrifice to God. For the offering of the incense to our God. How about this? Tonight, I know, here you would have said, no, no, no. But suppose you were there. You may, ha uh ha, -huh. you may take side with them. You may say, what's wrong? What's wrong? For all to go to Zion in ancient time, the most 10 miles a day they can make, for all of them to go, huh? from there, the north, to Jerusalem, then maybe 150 miles, and maybe 15 days. How about that? It's too awkward. Don't be so narrow-minded. Give the people the convenience. Let them worship God. If they go to Jerusalem only two times a day, a year, maybe here, on this high place, three times a day. We don't worship the idols. We worship Jehovah our God. How about this? Isn't the excuse today? Yeah. You tell me. Isn't the excuse today? Oh, today, every division in Christianity has a good excuse. You read so many verses repeating again and again and again and again. Oh, Asai was perfect in his heart before the eyes of the Lord. He was perfect in his heart before the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Yet, it says what? Either it's a nephthalize or how beat. Or but the high priests were not removed. And the people still offered their sacrifices on the high priests and even offered the incense to the Lord on the high priests. But the Lord would say, I don't care what you do. And the high priestess. As long as it is something the high priestess, it is abominable in my eyes. 
because that causes division. And that gives you the chance to indulge yourself in your desire. And that affords you an opportunity for your ambition. Could you see this? I tell you, only the genuine worship, the genuine offering of the genuine sacrifices, genuine incense, ah, at the unique place of God's choice, this would kill all the lust. And this will shut up the door to all the ambition. At other places, even you have the genuine offering of genuine sacrifices, but not on the unique place of God's choice. Even this gives you, even this gives you the opportunity to indulge yourself in your desire. Am I right? How and why the ground of oneness was damaged just by this. By the indulgence of lust, by the ambition exercised on the high places. To use the high places to keep people for the fulfilling of your purpose. I would say, young people, you all have to know this. You all have to know this. Well, let me say something for myself. Some of you young ones may say, oh, brother, of course, today you are taking the lead, and you are the number one, and you are this and that. Don't say that I'm not the number one. Maybe you are the number one. Our number one is just easy. Is Jesus Christ. Amen. But many here who came from Chan 30, 40 years ago who were with us in Chan, they all saw our situation. There, 40 years ago in Chan, I was a little potato. No name. But, by his mercy, I have to boast a little bit. I did a lot in the work. Always, I was under one direction. That was always under Brother Nee's ministry. I didn't teach anything of my doctrine. I didn't preach anything of my gospel. All the time I preached, all the time I taught, the same as Brother Nee's ministry. If not 20, at least more than 10 in this room, around or close to my age, who are there in China with us, they all can testify. I don't care whether I'm the number one or I'm the number last or I'm the number nothing. I don't care for this. I only care for my duty. Don't consider this in this way. No, no, no. This has to be set out. No chance for any indulgence of the lust. And no opportunity for any kind of exercise of the ambition. This is what this is to tear down all the high places. No divisions. No divisions. No, nothing elevated. Nothing elevated. You just tell, tell us brothers and sisters, especially young people, even the young people today are very smart. Right? I mean it. Could you say anything among us elevated? What is elevated among us today? You say. What else? (sighs) 
If you would just keep this ground of God's choice without any other elevation, how could there be any possibility of division? Could there be? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. No elevation of anything. We only have one exaltation. That is the one we gave to the Lord Jesus. He said there is no elevation. Am I right? No elevation. What do we elevate here? What do we exalt? Yes, we talk a lot about life, but we don't make life an elevation for a division. <sighs> this is a real test. <laughs> Sometimes the brother told me, no brother Lee, we do have some brothers very sharp. Some sharp brothers in Furit. Some sharp brothers in uh, Long Beach. I like the sharp brothers. But your sharpness must be restricted. By what? By the ground of God's choice. Brother, don't be that sharp. That you could have something elevated. Nothing. Nothing. I'm standing here in front of all of, all of you. Could you point out that this brother of yours does all the time elevate something? What is my elevation? Say it. That's right. I don't have any elevation. I don't have any elevation. So, hallelujah. We surely can say that in the Lord's recovery, we don't have any high place. No high places. No high places. Not like today's Christianity. Everywhere is a high place. Many, many elevations. Am I right? All the elevations are just divisions. All the denominations, all the different free groups, all the different practices, I tell you, honestly speaking, are just elevations. Right? So, this firstly damaged the ground of oneness. They damaged the desire. They damaged Jerusalem. And eventually, have you noticed? Uh huh. Firstly, the Syrians are oh, Assyrians, the same. Just like today's Syrians. Damascus. Firstly, the Syrian king came and defeated them. Then they captured the capital of North country, Samaria. You know, when the Lord Jesus came, that was about 700 or more later. When the Lord Jesus came, she talked to a Samaritan woman. She was a mixture. Why she was a mixture? She was no, she was not so pure in blood. Why? Because the Syrian king <sighs> captured the Jews in Samaria away. And he, the Syrian king, moved in a lot of heathen to Samaria to replace the population. Then that was the cause the Samaritans were a mixture of blood. The point of this, because, because the nation of Israel caused, set up more high places. So they were the first to be kept away. Eventually, God said, okay, I just what? Cast you out of the Holy Land. 
And the Bible says the Lord cast them out of his presence. The Holy Land, I tell you, actually was just the presence of the Lord. When you are, when you were in the Holy Land, you were in the presence of the Lord. When you were carried away, I tell you, you were carried out of the presence of the Lord. Number one. Then number two. That kind of a captivity should be considered by the southern country, southern nation Judah as a warning. But they didn't consider it as a warning. Yeah, rather they followed the southern nation Judah. They followed the northern nation of Israel in the same way. So that evil, that evil, what evil? To build up more high places. To build up more high places. To bring in more evils that forced the Lord. To send the Pharaoh Nico, the king of Egypt, to come in. And the king of Egypt, he carried away the king of Judah, probably with someone else, to Egypt. Listen, before the king of Syria carried away some of the northern people away, and the Pharaoh Nico from Egypt, Carry away some to Egypt. Before this time, even they were on the high places. I tell you, they still were there in the good land. Am I right? But since they were carried away, some to Syria and some to Egypt, have you realized a real division began to exist? Am I right? But still, Judah, the southern nation, would not be warned. They still care. All those high priests, then eventually, ultimately, the Lord was forced to send Babylonian army. King Nebuchadnezzar, he came in with his Babylon army and he carried away nearly all the people with their kings. I just ask to uh, show you as I did in the past. Here is the Golan. Here is the Golan. All the children of Israel were there in the Golan. They were one people with a unique center of Jerusalem. Number one. But Firstly, they damaged this oneness by high places. And eventually, they lost this oneness. The oneness was lost. By what? By their high places. Their high places forced God to carry some of them to Syria. You see? Syria. Right? Then that caused them to be carried to Egypt, right? And eventually, nearly all of them were brought over to Babylon. You see? Now they were divided. <laughs> Now they were called the Egyptian Jews. 
And they were called the Syrian Jews. And they were called the Babylonian Jews. I tell you, up to this point, the ground of awareness was not only damaged, but was lost. Am I right? Ever so long. Is this clear? They were either Syrian Jews, or Egyptian Jews, or Babylonian Jews. They lost the ground of wonders. Oh. Don't you feel Psalm 137? Right. What feeling is that? Sitting by the rivers of Babylon. Being asked to sing a song of Zion. Oh, could I do that? Could you do that? Well, tonight the time is over. You just can't say today is Christianity. Don't you realize all Christians have been carried away? Right. All Christians have been carried away. The ground of oneness was not only damaged, but also has been fully lost. Where is the ground winners? Nobody knows. Am I right? Syrian Jews, Egyptian Jews, Babylonian Jews. You all have to realize eventually they all lost the language. They lost their fatherland. All became Syrians, Egyptians, and Babylonians. Terrible. It's terrible. I tell you, this is a clear picture of today's Christianity. I hope that the Holy Spirit may speak more to you through such a picture than what I've been speaking here tonight. I turn the meeting to you. Let's come back tomorrow morning. We have something more to say. But anyhow, tonight, I'd like to hear some confirmation from your mouth. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.